I, I grew up surfing. I grew up doing nippers, you know, from six years old to 18. And I, I'm 44 now and I still surf as much as I can. You know, healthy respect for the environment and wanting to keep the water clean is like the natural progression to trying to fix one of the world's greatest problems. If I can help build purpose into other people's lives, we can fast track cleaning up the plastics in our oceans. My first career, I was a product designer. I was responsible for design, engineering, and commercializing plastic injection molded products. The irony of that. <laughs> My second career, I was a boat builder for America's Cup racing teams. And I traveled the world for 12 years doing yacht racing and seeing all the trash in the water at different marinas. And uh, currently, uh, this is my third career, which is sea bin. And we started with the very lateral thought of if you've got rubbish bins on land, why not put them in the water? And it was the most obvious thing in the world that no one had thought of. A sea bin is, is very simple. It's a cross between a garbage can and a pool skimmer. We put it in the water and we skim the top 10 millimetres of the surface for microplastics and plastic fibres. Uh, the water comes in, the rubbish comes in, stops in a filter, and then the water passes through the pump and back into the ocean. The initial hurdles that we had to overcome was you, you need money to make things happen. You need you know, money makes the world change. I just wanted to be like Patagonia, where they could be a $100 million, multi-billion dollar company that puts so much money back into the environment and they're a business for good. How we got the seed capital, which was $360,000 in 2016, was we went to Indiegogo and then in a four week campaign, it was children and families and grandparents that were you know, giving us pocket money because we were doing something to save the planet. And like I still, I'm choking up right now, you know, thinking about this. It was just the most humbling, beautiful experience in the world. The Seabin video that we were using for crowdfunding went viral because nobody had seen a rubbish bin put in the water before to suck in the, the plastics and the microplastics. And uh, yeah, it got like more than a billion views across the internet. Yeah, it really put us in the spotlight. The first sea bin that went in the water was in the south of France in 2017. And then the first sea bin in Australia went into the National Maritime Museum in Darling Harbour in 2019. The most incredible thing about Seabin is we're the only ocean cleanup group that are monitoring the water for microplastics 24 7. Over the years, the Seabin product has gotten better, but just way smarter as well. Now, with the V6, we have way more capabilities. We've just worked out ways to tweak it so that we're creating more powerful data. The pollution index is a scale that we invented at Seabin when we realised that we could measure the plastic particles per litre, from one being the best and 11 being the worst. And it allows us to compare cities. So we can say Sydney's at five, Jakarta's at nine, and we can see where we're sitting on a global scale. Our sea bins in Sydney Harbour are in a pretty condensed location, starting from Rose Bay and going to the Sydney fish markets. In the two years that we've been operating in Sydney Harbour, we estimated that we were going to be pulling out around 56 tonnes of marine debris. And we're currently sitting at 73 tonnes of marine debris pulled out of the harbour and 1.3 billion litres of water filtered. Yamaha are a major sponsor for us in Sydney Harbour. Uh, they have one branded unit, but they're supporting the whole program that we're doing. So their support allows the program to keep going, basically. Yamaha have also supported us in the form of a Yamaha powered boat, which has really assisted our operations. Sometimes visiting our units by car with traffic and that sort of thing is not very time efficient. So doing it by boat really adds to our efficiency. The partnership between Seabin and Yamaha is just, it was a logical fit. I mean, Yamaha's, you know, business is on the water and we're on the water and, you know, you have to support the environment that supports you. The Ocean Health Lab we have in Sydney Harbour has become a vital piece of our operations. We have two full-time lab technicians, Carly and Talia, and they're in there monitoring all the data that we're catching and generating the numbers, which is our data. 
We have approximately 15 catches delivered to us here at the lab each week, which means that we're able to do a thorough data analysis on every single sea bin catch every fortnight. We basically analyse and pull out all of the different plastics, count them and categorise them for analysis. We input all of this information into our database, which we can then create reports um, by looking at different trends and patterns dependent on the locations of the bins around the city. Because of our location at the Australian National Maritime Museum, we are able to host daily tours with adults and children of all ages, and we're able to show all of the plastic pollution that we're getting from the seaving catches, which has really helped raise the awareness of plastic pollution in Sydney Harbour. So the 100 Smarter Cities program by 2050 is literally, how can we clean up an entire city's waterfront with all the microplastics and the trash. And so we figured if we could do this in Sydney, we could do it over in Los Angeles. And if we can do it in LA, we could do it in another uh, city around the world. And so we, we literally set ourselves the mission of 100 smarter cities by 2050. The biggest thing that's stuck with me since I started at Seabin is to not assume that people know that rubbish in the water is a problem. So one of our most important jobs is just outlining that there is rubbish in the water in the first place and then building on the education from there. Seabin's officially recognised by United Nations Environment. We align with SDG 14, which is life below water, and we also align with SDG 11, which is sustainable cities and better informed communities. And so if you have a, a more sustainable city and a better informed community, you're going to have less impact on the environment and less plastics in the water. The support from the Australian government, the local government, state, has just been absolutely minimal. And we can't work it out because it's we've got social license, it works, we've got proof of concept. And so we're starting to see a pattern of a real lack of accountability and a lack of governance we're cleaning up what the city and the council cannot keep out of the water. We're self-funding this, Yamaha are sponsored us, but we don't have support from the top down, which is really strange and it's actually really disappointing. I really get excited about the fact that the data that we're creating can be shared with some of the biggest polluters in the world and we can all work together. We can all do something and all of our somethings can join together to create real change in the world. To get involved with Seabin, just head to the website, sign up to a newsletter. You can sign up as a volunteer, a citizen scientist. We need volunteers for events. And even if it's just a like on social media or filling out a survey, it'd just be amazing. Where do I see Seabin in 10 years? Multiple cities with thousands of people trying to make the world a better place. And like ultimately, I just want to go surfing without plastics, you know? Like, our, our goal is to do ourselves out of business. We're Seabin, and we're united by Yamaha.